little betting buzz action, little water cooler talk, some talk that I definitely enjoy. Caitlin Clark, she's on everybody's brains since the women's NCAA championship. I mean, she really is that person to talk about, to bet on, all that good stuff. It's perfect because she's a guard. And, you know, we Frank DeFord, legendary writer, wrote this about Shaq back in the day. That he was saying, like, Shaq's like Jordan, but the problem is we can't identify with the biggest guy. No. Us humans who just shoot on our in our driveway, we know the guy who can shoot. You, know, you can just identify. So we can identify a little bit with Caitlin Clark. Now we can't do the step back logo threes, but it's you a can't. But it's a com- <laughs> it's a comfortable sort of conversation. And you know, we were all glued to this high level basketball from a bunch of teams, and it was great. The championship game. You have this undefeated team, the Quest for undefeated team with nine all- McDonald's All Americans or whatever it was against this guard. Um, you know kind of like Hoosiers, right? I mean, it's a different state, but there was an element of that with trying to lead them and trying to be the one-man band to beat the big undefeated. So, her moving on to the next level, the the betting buzz with Caitlin Clark is she's a 15-1 to favorite to win the WNBA MVP as a rookie, as a rookie. So, I wonder, man, is that is that good money? Is that money well spent? I know someone who might have bet. So, I, I bet 21-1 to and 20-1. to so a couple layers to this, and for people who aren't familiar, the WNBA draft is next week. Indiana Fever had the number one pick. That's as big of a lock as there is. Um, something to keep in mind is her boyfriend works in the front office for the Indiana Pacers. So in terms of the adjustment phase, it's going to be <laughs> easier really, on her to adjust had no idea. to new surroundings and new everything, right? What about that as a prop bet, whether or not where she gets drafted? It, well, it's, a, it's minus a million or something. <laughs> so she's going to the Fever. And with the MVP ballot, it's very open-ended. So there's things that she's going to accomplish or do that voters may incorporate into their MVP ballot, like her resonating and increasing the popularity of the league. That will happen. Sellouts everywhere she goes. Her games are all going to be national television now. All but like four games are on national television. It was announced with a fever. When they play the Aces, the game got moved to a bigger arena. T-Mobile Arena, yeah. Than where the Aces traditionally play. I can't wait for the game, honestly. So this might be part of someone's ballot. So that's why I think that, and on top of that, you have super teams. So they're not going to win the title. The other super teams are loaded. So there could be some cannibalization of them, and someone who wins MVP may be on, like, the fourth best team or something like that. All right. So how about a little bit of reality now? Uh, I'm, I'm saying that they're not going to be like one of the bad. No, no, I got you. Like Alyssa Thomas almost won the MVP last year. She had the most first place votes. And the narrative was that she wasn't on a super team. She was. They were the third seed on the East. They were not a super team. They just went to the finals a year before that. Okay. And they the, their starting center ruptured her Achilles the first week of the season or whatever it was. So she was out for the year. So the narrative was that she was pairing a, a team that was good but not great. See, that somewhat was the narrative. Yes, that's true. But she also had the triple doubles. Like, that was a big, she was huge. Worthy, of course. But it was like when Westbrook won as a six seed or whatever it was. That's what I'm hoping with Caitlin Clark. Okay, I got that. Um, things to consider. One, the WNBA players are coming for Caitlin Clark. They are, well. So that's the real hook on this. And my yeah. question to you, since you brought it up, and that's really what we need to discuss, is what do you think she'll average and what do you think her production will be at the next level. Okay, so if she were to win the MVP, I think she would need to average somewhere in the ballpark of 24 points, 25 points a game, and maybe eight assists. If she got that, she's a lot for the MVP. Really? I think she averaged 25 a game. So I think if, I think if she has memorable like games, like either game winners or like some 30-point, 40-point bombs, and then averages like 20, I think it's fine. I think it's all about like the Heisman moment component to things. Okay, so right. if, if she averages twenty, I, I think, and the team does, very and, and the eight assists, dude, like that's why I, I mean, why I'm optimistic on her ability to transition because she's a willing passer, she's very good with the ball, and so while the defense will be higher quality on her for sure, so will her teammates. So teams can't just focus completely on her and do a box in one and all this stuff that she had to run into. 
But that keeps her from averaging 20 points a game. She's always passing the ball. But if she's dynamic assists, and they didn't make the playoffs last year, and I think they're going to make the playoffs this year. They better. Kelsey Mitchell's excellent. Yeah. And Aaliyah Boss is pretty good, too. Yeah. So they have enough. Now, they're not on the same stratosphere as the, the big the, the super teams. And I think if you include Seattle, there's three of them. And so I I just think she's going to elevate everyone's game. I'm a, But I also think she's awesome. Keep in mind, whenever these topics come up, when it's like the old guard, retired players, or and there's criticism of the new kid on the block, the old guard is usually dead wrong. So when Steph was doing all this, Oscar Robertson and all these guys were saying all these things, they were completely wrong. The game, this is what a, one of my favorite, one of my fam, favorite uh, radio guys always says, the record mile doesn't get worse. Like, it's called an evolution of an athlete. The sport has evolved incredibly. College, women's college basketball has evolved. She is going to be just fine in the WNBA. This is not Lynn's sanity for two weeks, and then he gets a rude awakening when, like, LeBron and D-Wade are, no, I, you know, I don't smothering. want to be the guy over here saying that I think Caitlin Clark is going to be bad. She'll be an all-star, in my opinion. She'll be very good. Now, the She'll question is— She'll definitely be an all-star because it's a, it's a fan vote. I mean, exactly. She's going to start and be put up very good numbers right away. Like, it's—the ball's not different. The rim's not different. She's going to be doing step back open. So I'm asking you, is someone going to be swatting her step the back players, open threes? The players are going to be different. Yes, they're they're not going to give her the step back threes. They're not. Going How to, are they not going to? Because they're going to they're they, get up on her, make her oh, so to the like basket. the NBA players did on James Harden. You can't you can't guard those things. Her step back is not James She's Harden. She's six foot tall. Oh yeah, but they're going to get they're going to get in her face. Right, and then they'll she'll hit the the slip screen person for an easy layup. Like the quality of play on her team is going to be way higher than it was in Iowa. Yes. much like the quality of defense on her will be would be much better. Correct, but the, it's not like she is a six four post player going to the WNBA and all of a sudden going to be guarded by six four. She's going to be guarded by people that aren't. As that slow. are slow, exactly, okay. and that are more athletic. And their main goal is like, you're not going to come out here and kill me. But typically the offense wins in these situations. Like, she's going to get to the hoop and dish or hit like a bunny or floater. Maybe, and then the logo threes are going to go, not every time, but she's going to stretch the defense in the WNBA just as much as she does in college. I don't think so. I think she's going to the rack and, and, and Asia is throwing it out of there. She didn't okay, play. so the two times she plays the defensive player of the year. <laughs> she happened to be the defensive. But Asia Wilson isn't the only tall player in the WBA. And she's going to, to Atlanta to play against their... That's fine. She, she'll call. So WBA players like don't miss open shots. So she'll just kick it out. She, if she drives and there's a little bit of a stunt or a collapse on the wing, she'll kick it to a teammate who's not going to miss an open three. No, I agree. But that keeps her from averaging a bunch of points. Okay, she'll have like 13 assists then. I mean, she's... The perimeter game is an easy adjustment. Okay. The, it's the big man. It's like Zach Eady going to the NBA has no shot to be, like, really good. I think that's Zero. way different. I think yeah. he'll be out of the league. Well, the game is in a few years. Right. So, But I, perimeter players will get their buckets and everything. See, this is a great debate because we're oh, going to talk about – let, let me just end with this. I'll end with this. Kelsey Plum coming out of college, the leading scorer in NCAA history, she struggled. She wasn't as good. She wasn't. How far did Washington go in the tournament? Uh, I don't remember yeah, how far they very went. Far. She wasn't as good. She wasn't as evolved. Well, you know what? Want to know why? Because that was seven years ago, Brian. No, she she wasn't because she wasn't the shooter. Right. But she scored points, though. She was, But she didn't score points in like a weaker, that. In a weaker era. And yes, the era changes every three years. So in a weaker era, and she was a one. There well, was she some, didn't play as well in WWE. There was That's someone in point. Minnesota, I can't remember her name, was scoring like at will and she plays for actually uh minnesota pro team so she was not like a top pick or anything like, like i think her name was caitlin or something like that. So, but she's a generational play like she is she's the truth as you as, as we say sabrina amsq did not come that's into a, a better comp that's a better comp we'll see i think there's a difference but i could be wrong on that okay man we we need to fast forward and see how this thing goes that's a better comp and kelsey plum got a lot better in the, in the pros uh, i don't that's the de yeah. That's debatable, but yeah, okay. yeah, she, yeah. She did get better because she stunk her first couple of years. Yeah. Anyway, that's a good betting buzz. Good water cooler talk for sure.